Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, some goodies came in the mail. I don't care who you are. Okay, I'll put it this way. Most of us really like to get things in the mail, especially if we get a good deal, especially if we ordered it for Bonsai. <laughs> then I'm really excited to get stuff in the mail. I got a package the other day that had two things in it that um, were, they were a necessity, let's put it that way. Unfortunately, in the short time I've had my plants in the plant room, I've already had to make or I have to make uh, a fix. Yeah, so let's show you what's going on and then we'll dig into the boxes to see what we got. So right now, I'm inside the little closet section of my plant room that we've shifted things around and we've only had the plants in here for a couple of weeks now. Um, there was a lot of chatter back and forth on the uh, Minnesota Bonsai Society Facebook um, club, the group. I should say the group section. Uh, we have like over 225 members now on the uh, Facebook group. And so people toss out questions and when it hit down close to freezing a week and a half or so ago, uh, people started asking, are you bringing your trees in? So we went back and forth and which people were gonna play uh, the bones eye shuffle, you know, do the dance. I decided to bring my trees in early. And if I would have left them out for another week, it really would have been beneficial for the plants. They would have maybe pushed out a little bit more growth and. It just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been too bad. And it never did hit freezing yet. I think this morning for one hour it hit 32, so barely, and I didn't wake up and see any frost on the ground. Uh, but there might have been some, uh, some possible things that might have been affected, but not really. So the plants in here are love and life. The current dew point in here, or the humidity rather, is at 87%. So I'm still hovering in the 80s. I've only watered once down here, except for a couple that were in smaller containers. I did water a couple of times, but I already, I already have an issue. Um, if it's not one thing, it's another with bonsai, and guess what? Something's not working. So all my lights are set up real nice. I've got my par cans, six of them shooting down, top shelf, bottom shelf. And then I have all my, my 12 by 12 uh, full spectrum lights with that kind of pink purpley hue um, that certain growers made popular in our world. Yeah. So. Unfortunately though, this one up here burnt out. So let's go ahead and turn these on real quick. Let's see if we can get these all on. All right, on and on. Okay, and then can we go on and on? Um, here we go. So let there be light. So we have the light over here, the light over here, the light over here looking nice and purpley. And then there's this little spot right over here that's a little dark. Now I've got my camera light shining on here so it doesn't look quite as dark, uh, but this one has gone bad. I have unplugged, replugged it in, made sure everything was connected tight, and it's not working. Sometimes I've taken these out and done all the process of unwiring things and unplugged it in somewhere else, and all of a sudden they kind of popped in uh, after a little shake maybe. You know, and you hope to get it back on and so far, no luck with that. So I already needed a new light. I've had a lot of people ask me in the course of the last uh, year or so, especially with all of the workshops I do with the Minnesota Bonsai Society, hey Dave, what do you use for tools? Yeah, where should I get some soil if you don't have any? Um, what about the lights? Uh, fertilizer, what are you using? Some, how about some fungicides, pesticides? I get those questions a lot. And I do have some relatively poor memory. I know what I use are the kind of stuff I use and you know pellets and liquid and, and some fish emulsion seaweed I can never remember the names all the tools I have so I thought we'd make an episode um, of um, what I use so I've been slowly collecting some of the pictures from when I've got them on for some of the favorite places I buy my tools uh, the fertilizer maybe on Amazon and so I thought I'd make a show on just some of some of the stuff that I have and where I've gotten them um, some of the price points kind of sort of you'll see them on the uh, on the uh, screenshots that I've taken of all these images from my receipts and stuff um, and I'll just show you what we're gonna use alright so we have to replace this light so I have a couple of uh, new ones 
that are a couple years old that they're super skinny and thin. This was one of my original ones and it's still cranking out. And this one is one of the newer ones and I'm not sure why it's uh, fizzled out. Um, you know, but sometimes you get one that only lasts a year or two. They've lasted three plus years, some of these now, uh, two, three, maybe a couple of them is on its uh, fourth year maybe. I'm not sure, three or four years. So, so far so good. And my energy bill hasn't really gone up from these lights. So they're super, of course, uh, very efficient, uh, super low costing lights. So that light has to be replaced. Can you guess what's in the box? And now for the fun part, opening the gifts. We're gonna put the small one aside. Why the small one? I'm gonna open the big one first because that's the best gift, right? I've often joked with the kids about that. Um, Christmas times, when there's more than one present, small, medium, large, and the large one is actually the smallest gift on the inside, and they open it because they think it's gonna be this big, really cool thing. Isn't that cruel to do? But they end up getting so many cool things that it doesn't really matter in the end. GVG, what do we got here? Yeah, it is the light. We need a new light. So. This is not a replica of what I have in the plant room uh, closet section right now. This is actually an upgrade. So I'm gonna show you some of the lights in a little bit. Um, but the main difference between those lights over there and this light here is actually the difference between in there and this monster of a light. So the light under my fish tank pot, um, I uh, made a little black kind of shade for this because it's such a bright light and it's uh, shining down on here and it spills out over here and over there and anything close by gets a lot of good light. This is a 600 watt light. Those are only 65 and 75 watts, but I have three of them in then one section, three of them down below. So it's cranking out a decent amount of wattage. But the one I got is the same as the one behind me here. So I have another 600 watt light and you know, it's under 50 bucks for this light. So we have some attachment uh, pieces, parts, lead grow light, user's manual from GVG. And again, I'm not getting anything from these folks. Just something that I really, really like to uh, use um, because it's worked for me. So we're gonna take it out of its package and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can plug it in and make sure it's working. And then we have to kind of figure out where it's gonna go in proximity to the other lights. Cause I think I might have to do some finagling in order to make it fit. We got some of our chain, chain and our wire here or our wire and our uh, carabiners right here. Look at how thin. So the ones in the plant room now in the closet area were this thick and this thick. And now look at this, super sturdy. It's a good metal or aluminum uh, material and uh, looks like to be about a four to six feet foot cable. I'm assuming close to six feet. And then they give you this really little, it's kind of a flimsy little hood or deflector, if you will. So we're gonna have these parts right here that poke through, and there we go. And then that gives a little bit of um, um, central, um, well, direction of the light, but not really. When I turn this one on, you can see how bright it is with this great big one by six shade underneath a uh, one by four here. I really covered these up, painted the whole thing black and, you, and the light through it is amazing. Um, this is really, it's not gonna deflect much light. It's just, gonna, it's just gonna pull on out. But in there, I think if I put it high above one of the uh, shelves, maybe the one that shelf that's more open, I think it's just gonna spill a whole bunch of light to all the plants and I won't need some of those par cans anymore. And then I can shift those par cans over to the light that burnt out. And I can get those really nice and close to the Portulacaria afros. All right. Oh, there it goes. So there is the LED grow light from GVG. And this one here is a 600 watt. Um, oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Maybe it's not the 600 watt. It's pretty bright though. It says here though, 60 watt. I'll have to double check on my online when I, when I show you pictures of everything. I'm back in the closet area with all of the cables to hang up my light. They're just gonna come crazily open here. And what's nice about this is this one comes all together. They're not in pieces parts. So this is the spread here, the four that go to the corners. And you can make this any height you want.
put this light right up here so it gets all of these plants up here and even some residual light down in there. And it'll even feed off into the plants behind me. Here's the trees without the new light. And here's the trees with the new light. Yeah, that's, that is a little extra light. We can take all three of those lights down and they will not miss a beat. So let's get my, uh, my thick uh, dowel here up on the ceiling see if we can put it in place. I'm going to put the enclosed one that'll be in there real nice in the back because I'll be able to put it in there from the front here and then the part where you lay it into this part will be here because I, I have more access here. I can put it into place a lot easier. So we'll shove it into the hole here and then we'll go ahead and lay it into place. I have the light I think securely fixed up here. I just wrapped up all the cable up real tight and it's holding up these four little mini cables up real nice. I got the cable for the wire up and around to come back over here and it's dangling over here where I need it to be. So now we can actually take this one, this one off for sure. And then I think we can take this one off as well. That's gonna come off. And then I think this one can come off. Part one is done for now. We got the light up here. It's a little crooked. Always bugs me when it's a little crooked. I want to try to make it straight, but it's good for right now. These are getting really good lights. I can go ahead and put the uh, Thanksgiving cacti back there. We got all our plants up here, and then some residual light is coming down to these lower sections and even to these guys over here, I would imagine, because this is a pretty powerful light compared to the other lights. Now the par cans that I took off, we have to go see if we can affix those where the light was broken in the first place. The brightness of that light makes these look so dim in comparison, for sure. So what I have to do first is take the old light, so I'm going to make sure I can grab the right light here. So this uh, LED grill panel light has bitten the dust. We'll plug it in just to make sure. Maybe we can, uh, after moving around and bumping it, we can go ahead and see if they can get some more life out of it. We'll put this one back where it was. So these two are there. So now we need a little grill par can over here. And I can just put it here and aim the light right down there at those lovely Portulacaria aphras. There. Wow, that just does not seem bright compared to over there. Power. So all our lights are on. Everything's wonderful. Bottom lights are the pink and purpley. A couple pink and purpley new par cans. And over here we have this really bright light. Uh, wonderful. I'm going to turn them off now into the timer mode. So they can be powered by the timer. I'm going to turn this back on to the automatic mode. And so this will go on tomorrow at its new time. I will come down and check it and make sure that it is in working order. And then we'll tidy things up here a little bit off camera. I think the plants in that closet area are really going to love life now under that new brighter light. Box number two, it is time for our fan. Yes, uh, we're going to have a fan in there to add some more circulation in the plant room. We don't want things getting too stale in here. So I've uh, ordered four of these now in my time uh, with making uh, some uh, circulation in my cold frames. I might even add one of these into the cabin cold frame down the road instead of the plasticky thing I have right now. But I think I would upgrade and try to get maybe the next uh, model up or two so it really can push a little more air. These are great for the indoor areas I put them and for my more condensed uh, cold frame. But I think out of the cabin one, I would have to make it a little bit bigger. So um, this is the, uh, uh, the Axial Series uh, fan, uh, AC Infinity. And uh, just a really nice fan, um, made really, really sturdy. These are uh, a metal, or uh, I would assume just a metal. Um, and you can hear that right there on the glass, how firm that is. Uh, we've got our uh, screws to put it, screw it in there. Um, and I've put these together a couple of times, so I don't need the manual at the moment. So fun to get this new one. And I just love really well-made uh, um, products. And so now the fan piece in here is plastic, but it is... Um, very thick uh, base here with it, and you can see how just how nice this spins just on the 
on, on the axle right there. It's just so smooth, and when that spins and circulates that air, and it's a, it's a really, really nice fan. And so you can go ahead and you can, uh, you know, put this on here on this side, and you can put this back here on this side to uh, keep uh, some some air particle, air of bigger things, feathers and stuff, I suppose, going in there. Um, keeps your fingers from going in there and punching uh, uh, your finger uh, more than anything else. Um, but the trick is how you're going to mount this to whatever you're going to mount it to. Um, now you can see um, there's a little hole right there. Out in my cold frame in the garage, I just put a nail through there and I just uh, put this up to, to a, the top or the bottom of a shelf and I just tack that right in. Um, where is it? Uh, there's one here and there's one here. So if you can get a nail in here and uh, tack it to the side, maybe that's what I did. I tacked it to the side here. Yeah, because this is up right here. And I tacked it right in there. And then I tacked it right here. And that was uh, able to uh, keep it in real nice and snug. Um, they do come with these uh, bolts here. So you can uh, take the bolts out and you can put them through. And you can put them through a piece of wood then. Um, I think up there, I think that's what I ended up doing. I'll show you a close-up of the one that's already installed, but see this is going to go through here and then you can connect it to whatever piece of wood you have. And then if you're going to put this fan in here for protection or this cover here, you put that in here and you put the, put the back one in and you're good to go. So there we go. We put that one there, we come back in here, and then you have your front and your back secure on there and you screw on with the washers and you put that onto some pieces of wood. You see how far it sticks out? So you can put a, you can have a piece of wood down here that sticks down and just, just connect it just to an ever so small piece of wood because again, this isn't terribly heavy, maybe a pound, and uh, you'll be able to put that on. So, beautiful fan. We'll uh, plug it in to see if it's uh, in working order and then we will see where we're gonna attach this uh, in our closet space over there. Has a very nice tight snug fit here with the cord that goes into there's a male and female part there and this can lay right right there even if you have that underneath there it's not uh, making this all on uh, on level and then we'll plug it in and see if we have some power here get this plugged in for you can you hear the hum Ever so slight, super nice, really nice little flow of air right here. This is really good. Let me get you one of my plants over here. You can see the plants moving around a little bit, wiggling around. Now, of course, you've got to be careful. If you have a plant like this right next to the fan, guess which plant's going to be drying out the fastest? It's going to be this one right here. So the ones on my porch carry afros, I have my low porch carry afros right where the fan is and the high ones over there, so it kind of goes up this way so the air doesn't go right on the leaves like this. But there you go. The fan is in working order. We'll put our tree back, and we're going to see where we'll put this on over in the closet area. So I want to put the fan right here to blow that way. So this fan goes through a little one by two, comes out on the other side, and then it just rests over here on top of it. And it's just uh, really nice. I just got the front uh, protection on that side. I'm all set to put the fan right here to get some circulating air from this part of the room into here, just above the plants right here. So all I have to do is take my piece of wood and it's gonna fit right through here. This will attach to the shelf and this, these uh, bolts up here can hold it all in place and we'll get it right through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna measure when this is flat against the uh, two by four here, what angle I want. And we'll get this into the two by fours. Okay, now that we got one in place, there. So that fits there. The pieces stick out there. So let's connect those up. I've tightened those by hand right now. And we have the fan where we want it. The lights came back on. And I have the fan. It's blowing out this way. 
getting some circulation in this room. When this fan is on and this fan is on now, we will have some air circulating. I can feel it right off the wall a little bit right here. Yeah, that's nice. Not right on the plants, but enough to circulate the air. I probably would like to get another one for down below here for the lower section as well, but for right now, this is our temporary fix. Now this is all nice and brown, and this is all obnoxious, bright, and light colored, but we got some extra stain somewhere laying around. We could maybe just darken this up a little bit to make it fit in a little bit more. So the fan is in place. I'm just gonna put the final pieces here so this uh, front grill stays on, and then we're done. And these are just hand tip tight, they should be fine. I could get a tool to make these a little bit tighter, but they are flush right there and there. We have a fan that is working just brilliantly. Put it back to auto so it'll automatically kick back into gear. Now I might put this on a timer so it's about 15 minutes every hour and so it's not on the whole day. Um, so I'll get a new timer to plug into there. Um, but in the meantime, we have a fan, we have the new lights, everything's looking good. When it comes to bonsai equipment, there's a lot out there. Some of what I'm going to share with you right now are the equipment pieces that I've used in my time in bonsai. We'll start with lights. So in the beginning, I just use a reflector light, and uh, like these from your basic box store. And the reflector light with a grow bulb in there, either the floodlight or just smaller bulb that were full spectrum grow lights in the reflector. And that's what I would use and put them real close to my trees. Now the reflector helps to spread that light around a little bit. If you don't have a reflector, it might not uh, spread the light as far into many plants. The reflectors run around 15 bucks and the lights are anywhere from 10 to about 30 bucks depending upon where you're buying them. Both these kind of lights on the reflector have done really well for me and I've had a couple of them really close to some of my trees like the ones I used on the Porch Lucaria Aphras in this video. The next step up for lights for me has been the uh, LED grow lights that come in the one by one or one and a half by one and a half foot grids of the full spectrum lighting. So I've used a couple different brand names and the one pictured here is uh, the Relidro light is what I show here. And the most recent uh, LED lights I bought and for $40 are the uh, full spectrum grow lights from GVG. So I've bought two of these and both of them have done really, really well. These are 600 watt lights that have produced a lot of light from my plants. A couple of these would take the place of about six of the other kind. So if you're gonna spend some money, why not spend 40 bucks, buy three or four of them, and you'll be set up in your plant room. Both of these lights so far have been durable and lasted a long time. I've only had one or two burnout so far in under two years. And for this price point, um, that's not too much over the course of a couple of years. Shifting now to tools, one of my favorite websites to go to is Stone Lantern Bonsai. So if you go to Stone Lantern, you'll be able to find a lot of tools, but just don't buy them at full price. There will always be sales at Stone Lantern, and you can get anywhere from 10 bucks off, 20 to 30% off, and sometimes they'll claim that most things on their website are 50 to 60% off. Some of the higher end tools will not be a part of those sales, but you will get some good prices. I did buy uh, a large bonsai trunk splitter recently, and I did get it for the price of about $45. I have some bonsai carving tools in my collection that I purchased and they're not too expensive. If you're gonna work on some gins or some sharis, carving up some bark from the trunk to give you some dead looks, uh, they work really, really nice. These carving tools are really good for starting your air layering as well. Gives you nice clean cuts. You could also use a straight edge for that, but these tools have been wonderful. When it comes to shears, I've used a couple of different shears over the time, but the uh, uh, Kiku, I believe, uh, silver, and the uh, gold ones there, the long-handled trimming scissors that I've used. These two scissors, one is uh, 20 bucks and one is 54. I can tell you right now, the one for $20, the uh, Kiku uh, uh, silver, that one did not last very long. It didn't feel as good in my hand um, and wasn't um, it just as sturdy of a tool. But for 20 bucks, again, what can you expect? The one for $54 that I can show you here right now, this tool uh, has been in my toolbox for over a year now, and I love it. It's one of my favorites. The Okatsune or Okatsune Master Grade Bonsai Shears here, shown for $75, which is $20 off. One of my favorite tool uh, in my bag. Um, this one has been a very good tool, greatly made, and of course you are paying for it. So you see right there, I just showed you a $20, $55, and $75 tool. The more you spend, the better you're going to get. I really have had some good luck with the Roshi brand. So I've had some Roshi cutters. Uh, the silver ones are really easy to use and very sharp. They don't um, keep their, when you spread the shears open, they want to close real uh, quickly. So sometimes 
Um, if, the, if they're bigger ones, they don't fit in your hand quite as comfortably. Um, they open and close real easily is what I'm trying to say. But very good shears, a good size here. Um, I certainly have done really well with the 6.5 incher, and I've even gotten the 8 incher, and it works really well. My most recent concave cutters, however, have been the um, concave cutters by Roshi in the dark black look. And uh, I got a 40% off deal where I recently paid $30 for a $50 pair of 8-inch uh, concave cutters. And so I typically will buy a couple at a time at that price. And the black version of the Roshi uh, concave cutters have been really good. Much more precision, and it feels even better than the silver version. Um, so I like the Roshi brand as well. I also have a single prong wood handled root hook. This hook does really, really well for you when you have more trees, bigger trees, and it's um, less tiring on your hands when you have a bigger tool. That doesn't show it in the picture, the size, but it's much bigger than using a little root rake for repotting your trees. Now, these are, of course, just a few of the tools out there. Um, you, you get what you pay for, so if you want to pay for good tools, you're probably going to spend 50 to 75 bucks per tool. And if you can get those same tools in a kit where the whole kit is 150 bucks, you probably can save some money. And again, remember to buy them on sale because at Stone Lantern, they're almost always on sale. Don't pay full price. I've also bought my bonsai wire from Stone Lanter. Uh, I've gotten them a kilo at a time. You can get them for much less than that. The prices have gone up substantially, though. Um, when you see this picture here, $19.95 for the kilo, that's now $24.95, but when it's on sale, it's $21.95. So it's gone up a couple of bucks. Be careful there. Um, I've also recently purchased some shade cloth for my outdoor trees. And this uh, shade cloth, just something on Amazon that I found, uh, has done really, really well. Sometimes I've used heat mats in my cold frame. Gives you that little extra warmth so the heater doesn't go on as much if it gives just a couple degrees in that cold frame to keep it from clicking on the other heater. Um, and also if you're rooting um, and you want to get a lot of that warmth in, uh, when you're re-rooting some uh, uh, trees, um, it's nice to have those cuttings uh, to get new roots with a heat mat underneath. Uh, this has been a good brand for me uh, and that's worked really, really well. I also have had a thermostat regulated sensor here with the Inkbird Wi-Fi ITC 308 digital th temperature controller. And so this temperature controller has done really, really well. I've actually kept it in my plant room for air temperature. You can also put it in your soil, um, and it works really good to get the uh, temperature right there where that sensor is, and then that'll turn on your heat or turn it off based on how hot your room is. That's worked really well for me in my plant room. Shifting now to fertilizer, I've only tried about a half a dozen uh, kinds of fertilizer over my time in Bonsai, and my favorite to date is Grow Power. Now, you're going to pay a lot for this, and this Grow Power, you get 1,250 count, right? It's huge, and so you get a lot of, uh, of Grow Power in there, but it costs 150 bucks for that, right? So if you have just a few trees, that's going to last you probably a couple of years. I've bought in a Grow Power box like this, and I use one box in a season and I didn't have enough. But they're little pellets, little pucks. They look like little tiny pucks, and they slowly disintegrate in your pots. Super, super good. I think my trees have liked the grow power. I've used Dr. Earth a lot as well, and uh, I used to get their brand that was like a 655 for the fertilizer or an 855, but they don't sell that anymore online. It's just 555, but that should work as well. I have tried some uh, seaweed, fish seaweed fertilizer. Um, uh, this is the brand that I've used so far. Um, that seems to have worked pretty good for me. I also bought some organic liquid seaweed and kelp fertilizer recently um, by Bloom City. And so Bloom City, I still have a little bit of that left. I didn't finish it this season. Um, so I've used both of these kind of uh, fish, seaweed, or um, um, kelp. It's worked pretty well so far, I think. I haven't noticed like drastic changes, uh, but they do say that the seaweed will get your uh, leaves to be greener and more richer in color and just uh, bring out the health in there. I've also used the Dr. Earth 751 Liquid Solution Probiotic. Now, that's just a 333, so that's barely any fertilizer. So, yeah, not very expensive for that bottle, but for 22 bucks, you're going to go through that in a couple of fertilizations. And, of course, when you use liquid fertilizer, it goes right through our bonsai soil. So that just seems like more of a waste of money, but it's always good to have a little extra fertilizer on hand, and having a couple of different varieties doesn't hurt. And then, of course, you could always go with miracle Grow. Uh, it's a uh, pretty... Um, Pretty basic fertilizer, uh, and they have some organic fertilizers if you like to stick with organic, but some of them are the chemical. And it's just so easy to use for 10, 12 bucks. You get a, a huge package, and you're pushing, just putting a little bit in every time you water, and that can make your trees very, very happy.
Now I'm going to hit fungicides and pesticides. Now I'm an organic person and I want to stick organic as much as possible. So I've used the neem oil. So you put a little neem oil in with your uh, water, usually 40 parts to one, something like that, a teaspoon per gallon. Uh, make sure you read the directions. Uh, I've used the Bonide brand. Bonide seems to be a pretty popular um, fungicide, uh, pesticide product. I also picked up some horticulture oil as well, the Monterey LG and I've used that once or twice on my trees as well. And again, this is a really low base uh, uh, cure for some of the uh, white soft bodied bugs, um, helping you with uh, um, those pests. Um, and so many feel that the neem oils, the horticulture oil is not quite as productive, of course, as the harsher chemicals. I'm just trying to stay away from the harsher chemicals. I also purchased some bonite insecticidal soap and it's ready to use. And the insecticidal soaps are an organic way to get rid of, again, some of those soft bodied bugs. I've also used GrowSafe. And so the uh, GrowSafe ban here, um, that's a organic natural miticide, pesticide and fungicide. So the GrowSafe, I still have some. I think I've only applied it once on my plants. It's a new product this year. So I'll have more details on that in future episodes, I hope, and how the GrowSafe helps get rid of some of those mites, some of those uh, uh, pests pest on your, uh, on your uh, trees, and uh, also if you have any fungicide issues. I did purchase some uh, gin seal lime sulfur for bonsai. Some people spray their trees at the end of the season with sulfur, a low uh, potency of sulfur. And so they spray that on their trees to help kill any bugs before they bring them inside. I have not done it for that. I have purchased that product, this lime sulfur, to uh, make my wood a little paler to make it look like that older dead wood. Some other things people really, really recommend is your um, systemic fungicide granules of different varieties. Now, I've purchased Infuse based on a recommendation, and Bonide makes an Infuse. Um, and it says it's a uh, lawn and landscape here. It's also uh, seems to be good for the bonsai trees. And again, this was based on a recommendation from someone. And so this bonide systemic fungicide granule will help to prevent some of the fungicides. So you put a little teaspoon over the top of your soil and then with watering, it soaks into your root system and it gets into the system of your tree, not just on the leaves when you see fungicide, but this is gonna hopefully prevent the fungicide. And I put it on for the last two springs, only in the spring, one application. And then I also have some bonide uh, malathion insect uh, control concentrate. Uh, so another insecticide there. Uh, the malathion is also very highly recommended for pest control. Doesn't get all the pests, but will hopefully kill many of the soft bodied bugs uh, and some of the things we run into in the bonsai world. So those are some of the fungicide and pesticides that I have used. The nice thing about insecticidal soaps is that if you're looking for a safe, effective, and low toxicity alternative to the toxic pesticides, which is why I use it, um, they have many advantages when compared to the other insecticides. They're inexpensive to use, they're among the safest pesticides, they leave no harsh residue, and they're natural products that are virtually non-toxic to animals and birds, and can be used on vegetables even. So if you have any of those fruiting trees, maybe a grape bonsai or an apple bonsai per se, uh, the insecticidal soaps are a good option for you and that's why I use them because again I tend to lead organic. I've also used copper for a fungicide. Fruit, vegetable, and field crop growers use copper-based fungicides as a protectant uh, for many foliar diseases. The key with copper is that it must be applied before the presence of the disease in order to be really effective. So a lot of organic growers will apply uh, the copper fungicides to prevent anything from happening down the road. So I might give a copper fungicide spray early next spring on some of the trees I've seen some on to see if that can help wipe out uh, some of the fungicides on crops before uh, they stir up. Copper applied as a foliar disease preventative is sprayed on the plant leaves. However, copper washes off the leaves tissues during the rain, of course, and when you water. Uh, so. Um, overhead irrigation and our watering systems, including rain, of course, will take that off. Frequent applications then are necessary to maintain the copper on the leaf surfaces and copper being used for more of a preventative before you see the problems. A couple of other products that I have used. 
So there you have just a few of the pieces of equipment and uh, treatments I've used with my bonsai. I hope this helps out. And if you have any things to add to this, go ahead and put them down in the comments. Some pros, some cons, some things that you've done with success. I'd love to hear them so we can share them to other YouTube viewers. I hope you enjoyed this little segment. A lot of people asking about some of the things I use, and there you have it. So make sure you're reading labels and applying things appropriately and reach out to club members. Uh, reach out to myself if you have specific questions, and we'll try to get those answered for you. In the meantime, hey, take care of you and take care of those bonsai, and we'll talk to you very, very soon on the next show.